Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, I will tell you a small story about two special people involved in a search that started almost 50 years ago. The first one, a good friend of mine, who finally and skillfully reached adulthood this year after six decades of crazy life and creation. The other one, hmm, the other one, a good friend of mine as well, who is trying to find Gerald for many years in order to deliver to him a very special message. His search began a long, long time ago. But let's see how old this started and let's meet him personally. But uh, something is missing. Um, ah, music. So let's let's get it started then, shall we? Who am I? Ah, of course. So rude of me not to introduce myself. I am the composer. One. Two. And this is the search for Gerald. Enjoy.
quit. Go get him. I've been trying to find you for a long, long time. And I finally did it. Ladies and gentlemen, Please excuse my intrusion, but I feel that at this point, and before you go away, I owe you an explanation. 
yes, before then credit. You may wonder what happened after our friend, Mr. Reaper, entered these doors. Did he find Gerald inside? Did he accomplish his assignment? Please join me to see what really happened. But for those of you who must leave, after all, some questions were never meant to be answered. Okay. Maybe you can go into the philosophy. What is the philosophy? This freaking jerk cut me off this morning. <laughs> Apostolos and I know each other. We worked on a film last year called uh, Da Capo. And it's about a music composer. And it was a great experience. I directed and I didn't know him very well before then. So then I get a phone call. What was going through your mind? I was involved in a festival uh, 10 years ago back in Germany in a, in a small city called uh, Iserlohn. Um, that, that time I, I, I went and I played a concert and I presented also a theatrical piece I wrote, uh, which had the title I didn't do it. which uh, no one, no one really still, understood. Still, still, still now, no one knows what it's going about. Yeah. The festival in Germany, the people there are so open, uh, lots of artists and composers, and uh, you, know, you see this, this vibe and this uh, vibrant um, uh, feeling around it. It was so, so important for me when uh, I was there.
director of the festival, Thomas Kirchhoff, uh, called me and um, asked me to, um, to create something, a new piece for the occasion of, uh, of uh, Gerald Garcia's birthday. 60th birthday and he's the, as I call him, the center of the festival for the last 18 years. Everybody loves him. He's a funny character. He's a very good writer for ensemble music. Gerald is a very outgoing person. He's a very funny person. He's a very talented person. And I knew that if I bring the subject of the Grim Reaper trying to find him, he will be the only one that he will accept this and he will be entertained more than anyone else. We had all this footage and you showed how outgoing this guy is <laughs> and how, you know, how much expression and how much uh, compassion goes into everything he does. If, if he's going to eat, it's, he's going to eat, you know, it's not just sitting there. It's, it's going to be it's, a it's show. It's an interaction. Yeah. yeah it's a show. <laughs> Paracalo. Paracalo. <laughs> is this our bus? I don't know, but we'll get on it, okay? Expression is some kind of new creativity. That's what excites me so much. Ideas, you know, where everyone's around practicing, learning their parts to this and parts to that, and this film is just like so creative and just what the artists, what we're looking for. The moment I got the commission from the festival to, to do a creation like this, a music uh, work, or as I uh, introduced them, the idea to do the, f the film, we all realized that, uh, that Gerald will definitely enjoy this idea. When I first got the call from him, uh, my first reaction was like, Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> ah. You're probably wondering. Well, that was my initial what idea. What is this movie about? What? My initial idea, as you may remember, it was that the narrator comes again. Welcome, hat, ladies and gentlemen, and deliver, yes? Okay, I am ready. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but then again, I didn't put it past this guy. He wanted to uh, incorporate many different elements for this live uh, production at the show. And I, I immediately jumped at the opportunity because I knew that with his music and with uh, my passion for film, we could collaborate together and ultimately make something pretty special. Uh, always, I wanted to do something interesting in my music, something that will involve some kind of a theatrical aspect. So um, the commission, it was to write uh, a, a music piece. So after uh, I don't know, 10 minutes of, of thinking, I called him back and I said, uh, how about if I uh, uh, make you a movie instead? The story about the Grim Reaper, it's not uh, a, a new story to, to me. It is an idea that came to me uh, more than 20 years ago, the, where, where I write music for, about death. Um, I did concerts about death. I convinced orchestras uh, to play music about death. I, I once appeared at Carnegie Hall dressed as the Grim Reaper. I always try to to, uh, to bring this element, but not as a scary element. Always, I would like to bring this in order to produce uh, this feeling that uh, the Grim Reaper is not so scary after all. So it's, it's almost a comedy in my in my music. The score for the film 
is uh, it's it's a score that uh, includes at least three or four orchestral pieces, uh, parts of those uh, solo music, uh, chamber music. Uh, hundreds of musicians, actually. Um, I work with uh, with conductors um, uh, Theodor Antoniou and uh, uh, conductors uh, composers Lucas Foss. Uh, the music came to me first before before the film, but always all these pieces they had this 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 ideology around around death. Yes. Yeah. So when I uh, finally. Uh, we decided to do the film, so I found this music will be very appropriate and uh, uh, I, I still hope and believe that it served the purpose. Uh, which, of course, it was only one part of the movie. The moment we finished uh, the movie, we realized that that will be uh, half of the film. We knew from the beginning that the film is going to be presented in Germany and also it will be followed by a live show. It was um, scary. And this is, this is the beauty we're trying to create, I was trying to create all this um, media together and live musicians and actually film and of course music and of course hundreds of musicians they worked before, yeah. uh, yes, and the theater aspect. I had already the script in my head. I had, the, I had already how the film is, is going to be made from the point of view of writing a piece. In the beginning, I wanted to send to the audience, it was this, this idea of sense of loss. There is a swing without, uh, without a child, there is a bicycle without a rider, yes, there is uh, mm -hmm. uh, an ambulance, there is a street without children, without any. So uh, that's why I was trying to figure out also what the music will be and what the, mu the, the best music will be appropriate for this. Uh, that's why um, I, I decided to, to use uh, this, this idea where the music has uh, almost a distorted feeling uh, and, and uh, the guitarist in this, in this movie uh, uh, it's using his, uh, his fingernails on the string to create this kind of scratching sound. So the scenes uh, of, uh, that uh, they portray this, this kind of sense of loss, they were, they were important to me because they, they do actually show uh, that something something wrong is, is about to happen, which is another, another interesting contrasting element, which the Grim Reaper, of course, is the wrong thing when you actually see him, uh, which essentially uh, at the end, and as the, uh, the, the movie and the film is progressing, uh, we realize he's not, such, he's not such a bad guy after all. The music uh, in the beginning is very simple. Uh, starts with this very one or two notes. This is it, and every time we hear this, we realize that's the Grim Reaper theme. The story of the Grim Reaper and the way we present it in this movie, it's it's a funny one. Yes, I mean well, you can say yeah, it's it's, uh, it's a comedy. Yes. It's comedic but we, yes. we try to make it kind of a serious film and in a lot of ways a, a bit of a personification of uh, some of your music but lightheartedly of course you know it, it, it may it may be that people have a certain idea about death but this film will help them look at it in a different light yeah <laughs> I guess yeah bring to bring a, a different light who who actually is the Grim Reaper? Well, light is a funny term to describe that. Yes. That's why it's funny. <laughs> Everyone can see it's, it's someone dressed like the Grim Reaper, but we don't actually know who is this person. We know that this person uh, has a, a normal life, 
Well, yeah, it's... As, uh, as, uh, as far as we see in the movie, has a normal life, has, uh, uh, has needs, is, 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 is lonely, is, is almost uh, sympathetic, you can sympathetic, say. Sympathetic, yeah. Uh, he needs uh, coffee to get him going, exactly. like he needs, he needs these things. He, he, needs... Ne he needs a shower. That's why as the whole film is progressing, we create this kind of a, of a sympathetic attitude, uh, of a sympathetic uh, uh, air around the Grim Reaper. He, he's, uh, he's fed up with uh, people in the street uh, when he's driving his car. Uh, apparently, uh, he's having his sickle with him all the time, which is sticking out of the car. <laughs> the funny thing about this, uh, where, where always I found it very interesting in the movie, is that the actually Grim Reaper uh, doesn't have any, uh, any special skills. He, he's, uh, he doesn't have any special <laughs> skills. It's like, it's uh, even his job to find, uh, you know, the person that he's supposed to find, he's not even successful in this. In the movie, supposedly, the private eye has to keep his mouth shut, like this is between him and the private eye. <laughs> These little artistic liberties that we took to uh, convey the message that uh, the Grim Reaper is, still the boss, even though he needs some help. To wake up in the morning, he's not even successful to do this on, on time. He's yeah, late. He was late. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's successful that he's ready, so he's sleeping with his outfit, with his sickle he's next to, to it, so he's re ready to go. Uh, but uh, essentially, as we see in the movie also, when finally he gets his assignment, he, he doesn't, he cannot find Gerald. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah. well, he, he can't deliver, I mean. He cannot deliver. Which makes him sympathetic. Yeah. I know that there's this fantastic film that's been made, um, a brilliant film which I think addresses so many interesting issues, all under the umbrella of uh, one big gag, but obviously it's, it's effective and interesting and profound. I'm a performer and um, a great supporter of the cause, and a great <laughs> celebrator of the birthday, and a commitment and a devotion that few people could ever count on from their friends. The whole idea of this film is a bit outrageous. We have music, film, we have a uh, live theater, and in terms of the live show and the production of it, I very much experienced what it would be like to actually be there through all the video and uh, footage that we have from the show. Obviously the music is a, a strong, important part of it, and a very much a storyteller of the film. But when you get all these people in a big concert hall, and you get a live uh, orchestra, and some of the world's best musicians together in this one area, there's the element of surprise that always uh, captivates audiences. Just hearing the applause from the show after was thrilling for me because I obviously lived vicariously through the video and hearing the applause continue for longer than five minutes. Well, here you are at last. 
forget for a while what you do for a living. Play a little tune. First scratching, then uh, harp-like, then bell-like. I heard after this that people actually uh, left the concert hall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chris Rubin. I'm Laura Young, I'm from Canada. Irina Anatolyevna Kulikova Fallen Dance. And you, sir. I'm from Andrew Zell. You say, yes? I said it already. <laughs> I'm the man with a broken uh, thumbnail. Oh, okay, we'll fix this. I'm Danielle Cumming from Canada. Uli Stracke. Sergei Krenitsin from Baldi. Frank Lam from Holland, also known here in Iceland as Frank L. So, the slip just little va. I'm Marta from Vilnius, Lithuania. Fritja <laughs> Gorinsky aus Franken. I'm Gail Kevin from Nova Scotia. Mm. four hours uh, before the show and uh, I finally did it, uh, movie premiere uh, August 15th, 2009. I don't know what am I hoping, uh, things can go wrong. And uh, now we have a cameo appearance of our director here, Matt, there, which uh, you can see later, but uh, he has no money, so uh, she's uh, shoo shooing. So it's an accurate film. It's an, it's an accurate film. And uh, we ran out of um, music, so we have to cut some um, important transportation footage <laughs> from the airplane. Unfortunately, uh, my co-director uh, Matt Tucheron is not here, but uh, you know he will most likely see the end uh, on tape. Well, the energy is uh, full here, and uh, people are excited. So, um, we'll see. The church will be full, we expect 400 and plus people. So the hype is starting and uh, people are noticing something will happen and uh, as I said, the concert hall will be full up to the last seat. Time is so short. Yeah. <laughs> and so am I. <laughs> Not as short as me. <laughs> Getting there. He will be gobsmacked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is the message? Am I sending to um, to my friend Gerald uh, the Grim Reaper to, to take his life? You say you're a sensitive man. You say your own fears almost overwhelm you. Once proudly you too were mortal. What was going to stress for 10 years ago? The, the overwhelming experience made me become 10 years after. <laughs> so um, uh, I feel uh, honored that uh, we are finishing uh, the 18th the International uh, Guitar Symposium here. And um, uh, I found it the most appropriate uh, how to finish a guitar festival. And uh, the most appropriate way is to finish it with the movie. I hope you will enjoy it. Uh, we're going to present the film. We have our live orchestra, the soloists and professors from the symposium. Please give it a hand to them.
So uh, I have to warn you that this is uh, this is kind of a scary film. So if you have any problems now, it's the time to exit. So uh, thank you so much, and uh, if you see me later, say hi. You know no one likes you. Your presence automatically signals the absence of loved ones.
point of creation, nothing is outrageous. <laughs> Famous Gerald Garcia. Uh, I'm just Gerald Garcia. I'm, I'm, I'm not famous. Do you mind, do you, uh, Lord? Do you mind to, to hold this microphone because I want to give him one more little thing. This is a little thing. To remind you our ter ten years anniversary. How can I forget? Anyway, of the first piece we did together. Yes, okay. this was this was a, a great piece. Yeah. What do you think about today? Yeah, about the day. About the I, I was surprised, first of all, because I was surprised that I didn't know anything about it at all. And in a place with 200 people, you know, you expect somebody to say something, say wouldn't something. you? No. And nobody did. And I was I was really amazed. And the other thing is, I was delighted. <laughs> yes. Yes, because. Um, I thought you just stuck any old photograph of me onto a film which you already made. <laughs> and I thought, how can he do this? Photoshop, you know. But actually it wasn't. It was, I, I, as the film progressed, I realized it really was exactly. with oh, me in oh, mind. It was your film. It was my film. Yeah. I also like the idea of Def having to shave in the morning yes. and clean his teeth with an electric toothbrush. And I thought that was a very nice touch. The thing about um, being older, being 60, is that death obviously uh, becomes more important. But not just for you, but because your friends die one after the other. Exactly. And as you get older, you might end up being the only one. If finally someday you think that death is coming, which will be a long, long time in the future, you may think when, when death is coming, it's going to be transformed to something very beautiful. That's the message. I like that message. Yes. So, give you a hug. Thank you so much for the inspiration. Thank you so much for making a wonderful movie.